My name is Bart Coppens and I am specialized in butterflies and moths. I have one of the coolest jobs in the world. I work with butterflies and moths and today I'm going to show you a tutorial of how to feed butterflies by hand in captivity. Are you interested? Then stay and have a watch. I bet you really like the plate that I picked for this video. It's quite fitting, isn't it? So now I'm going to make the mixture that will feed my butterflies. I start off with taking some honey. Make sure it's natural honey and not some synthetic nonsense from China. Real, and I hate to use the word organic, but real organic honey. So just throw the honey on a plate. Um, the butterflies will really like this, but it's too thick for them and too sticky to drink. Plus, pure honey is not going to sustain their life. Butterflies need liquid food, so I add some water. The water will dilute the honey, but also give them some very important hydration. Because you cannot feed them pure sugar syrup. You have to blend it. So I just usually use a spoon or fork to um, mix the honey and water until you have about 50-50 honey and water solution. That's really fine for them. Makes it easy for them to drink if it's not thick, pure honey. Uh, it's important. Dilution is actually really important for the solution. So, if it's too thick, it's not going to be healthy for them. So, you don't want to put your butterflies in there um, without giving them something to walk on. I put a paper towel in there. Now, it absorbs some of the, um, of the solution, which is good. Because if you let a butterfly just walk in a sticky sugar honey water solution, then its feet will stick together, its wings will stick together, it will get stuck. Last but not least, I will add a little bit of salt. A very little salt, a little bit of salt. It's very important to not add too much. Because um, too much salt can kill butterflies. Just add a few grains of salt, that's it. Not more, not less. Okay, let's get started. So here I have the plate and today we are going to add our first hungry little butterfly. Well, it's not little. It's a Popilio um, Ophicephalus, Ophidicephalus. And I just put it on the plate, grab it lightly. And if it's hungry, you will see its tongue extend and the butterfly will stay still on the plate. Which is what's happening right here. If they are not hungry, they tend to fly away or walk away disinterested. But if they are hungry, they will just start feeding. Here you go. Butterflies don't have a mouth like other animals that can, that can chew. Instead they have um, what is more or less like a hollow tube. And it's called a proboscis. See, and if we put another butterfly on here, which is a Papilio pilumnus from uh, Central America, if you hold it down, eventually it will recognize the sugary substance and if it's hungry, it will begin to feed. Now this may take a while, especially if you handle the butterfly, it may um, be stressed a little and more concerned with trying to escape than trying to eat. But if you press it down and eventually it will get a taste of the sugary goodness and it will want to eat. This is what's happening now. I'm holding down the butterfly, which is at the first moment trying to escape because I'm holding it down but after letting it go it stays and you can even see its uh, tongue unfurling see its proboscis and reaching it into the substrate oh by the way I just call the proboscis like a hollow straw that was just a metaphor but it's actually not true the proboscis is more like hmm, a sponge in fact, it passively sucks up fluids. The butterflies don't really have much control over this at all. It has small capillaries in it, which means basically small spaces that get filled with water, like a sponge, that passively suck up moisture. Of course, the butterflies has also m muscles that can exert uh, pressure on the proboscis, uh, creating a sucking effect. But actually, even if they're not trying to suck up juices, Proboscis will just passively absorb fluids. Uh, this one is a difficult one. 
This butterfly has a temperament. It's a Charaxis brutus. And see what happens if I let it go. This is a really stressful species. So, boom. Yep. Now, this may take several tries. This is a difficult customer. But eventually, if you properly handle it, put it down on the plate, make it relax a little bit. It will struggle at first, but when it gets a taste of the solution, it will start to drink. Very gently hold it down, very gently. Make sure its proboscis touches the substrate for a short moment at least. And yes, I let it go and it's staying. That's a good sign. It means it wants to drink basically. And as you can see, the Gharx is Brutus. Um, it's now starting to drink. Here you can see the proboscis, which is basically its tongue. Well, it's not a tongue, they are modified mouth parts. But I'm calling it a tongue, I'm calling it a straw, which is actually absolutely untrue. It's nothing like that at all. But it's a good metaphor for people who are not experienced with butterflies. But, um, and here you can see all the three butterflies sucking up the juices together, which looks very lovely, especially on a plate with butterflies. I love my work, guys, I love it. So, at this point it just became a challenge to add more and more butterflies to the plate to get them to drink. Now, how long do butterflies drink? That depends on how hungry the specimen is and on what species it is, because some species can't drink much and only take a few minutes, while really big, hungry butterflies may feed for five or even 10 minutes. In the wild, they don't typically feed this long from a single food source usually, because flowers don't have as much nectar. But this is a plate full of uh, honey water solution, so they may stay in there for a while. In the wild, they have to work hard for their food, because they have to fly from flower to flower, and each flower contains a little bit of food. But no flower has enough food to, uh, to feed one butterfly for a whole day. So they have to fit, visit hundreds of flowers per day to fill their stomachs. And as you can see, they're just passively feeding here right now, sucking up the honey water solution. It's really easy, you don't have to force them. If they're hungry, they will eat it by themselves usually. So, there is no coercion. They say you can lead a horse to water and you can't make a drink. Well, you can lead a butterfly to honey, but you can't force it to eat. And if they're not hungry, when you let them go, they'll just fly away, like this butterfly right here, a Papilio demoleus. Boom. See, this one isn't hungry. See what happens? It tries to escape. So if the butterfly stays on the plate like this, that means it really wants to eat. You're probably wondering why I added a little bit salt to the mix. That's because the males of some species are attracted to salt. This butterfly is trying to drink my spit. Yes, that's right. Some butterflies are attracted to sweat, spit and even urine or are basically all kinds of solutions that contain salt. So a little bit of salt is good for them. Not too much, just a little bit of mineral. Oh, and by the way, every time I show a close-up of my mouth, people ask me what that spot here is in the corner. I was born with that, so don't worry about my health. It's just a curiosity. Every butterfly breeder has their own recipe for feeding butterflies, of course. Some like to go the extra mile and even add some nutrition to the solution, like proteins. Uh, soy sauce can be added, fish sauce that um, will sustain the butterflies with more than just only sugar water. But generally a honey water solution is the very basis of what they need. It at least contains the uh, sugars that they really need and crave and the moisture that keeps them hydrated. Now of course um, things like minerals, things like um, amino acids can make the food more healthy, but it's not absolutely necessary for their survival, but it may incre increase their lifespan and their ability to procreate in captivity. Especially males, to, uh, to be able to produce sperm, 
they actually need salts and minerals and sometimes certain amino acids. So they will not only visit flowers and fruits for sweet, sweet food, but they will also suck up, for example, fluids from even feces, rotting animal carcasses. Yes, it sounds very morbid, but these are very rich in amino acids, minerals, organic, um, basically all the organic compounds that nectar doesn't have in uh, fermenting fruit. So, now you're probably wondering why I'm doing all of this. Uh, I work with butterflies and these butterflies are actually celebrities. Take a look at this. Have you ever seen butterflies or moths in movies or TV commercials? Well then there is a small chance that they are from me. I have several jobs with butterflies and moths and one of them is filming them or bringing them to companies that want to film them. So in this case, these butterflies were being filmed for a commercial. I do them for various purposes and today they were in the studio trying to fly in front of a green screen. So that's right, my butterflies and moths are celebrities. So think of that the next time you see one on TV. Now, and of course, being the celebrities they are, I also treat them like celebrities. And of course, celebrities have to enjoy a good celebrity lunch. Hey everyone, what's up? My name is Bart Koppens and I work with butterflies and moths. But not only do I work with butterflies and moths, I also have a YouTube channel about my work. Exciting, isn't it? However, YouTube has decided not to support my content. And my YouTube channel is permanently demonetized. However, the reason I'm able to make big videos and amateur documentaries and other big projects is because my YouTube channel runs for 100% on donations. So if you like this video, consider supporting me on Patreon or read the links in the descriptions of this video to find other ways to help me. I know it's annoying to ask you over and over again, but I put this reminder in every larger video that I make. Just because it's important for me and my channel and upgrading the quality and doing better and crazier things for my videos in the future. Last but not least, I do not only cast butterflies and moths in movies and commercials. No, no, I'm also a biologist that researches them. So my work does not only sustain me and my channel. It also ends up helping the insects that we love. Isn't that worth it? Thanks for your viewership. And like and subscribe. Hope to see you again later. Bye bye.
Thank you.